Citizens United and Speech Now had some effects on how people think about elections, especially those who are actively involved in them. What has changed that you see is going to have impact down the road in, in how elections are, occur? I, I think Citizens United, Speech Now, and other cases, uh, re other recent cases, you can argue it's changed nothing or it's changed everything. Um, the biggest change is the the legal underpinnings of much of the current law have been stripped away, meaning much of the current law was based much more on an equal speech, leveling the playing field kind of approach. The Supreme Court, again, but it really unequivocally rejected that rationale for the law and Citizens United. In the short term, it allows people who were otherwise banned from speaking, from speaking, meaning corporate entities, particularly smaller corporate entities, like Citizens United was a nonprofit and it made a movie. Government tried to ban the movie. So that's no longer can be banned. Um, it, it also limits the power of, of government bureaucrats to regulate in that in that area. The, the other thing really striking about Citizens United opinion was how the Supreme Court took the FEC to, to task for its uh, antics over the years. I mean, it actually went so far as to say the FEC's business is to censor. Um, wasn't a good day for a federal agency. For years, the FEC had had continued to try to revisit prior case laws like Buckley and, 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 and really try to regulate speech in a way that the court had previously said not to do, and yet it kept trying to do that. And hopefully now, Citizens United will keep the government away from areas that really have always been protected by the First Amendment. So the chilling effect that that government regulators had, I think, has been diminished significantly, which is why I think more and more people are willing to speak out now in politics than, than had been willing before. Do you think there are chilling effects with respect to disclosure? Absolutely. They're hard to measure though, right? Well, they are hard to measure uh, for, for two different reasons. One, it's tough to prove up data um, in an academic sense to prove whether somebody didn't or did, did or did not speak because of disclosure. In a way, it's kind of like the death penalty. It deters murderers, but can you really quantitize? Can you really have someone say, gee, I would have killed someone but for the death penalty? You really don't get that kind of data. It's something you instinctively, I guess, I guess know. But two, we do, we do have some record evidence. You do have cases in California and ballot initiatives and whatnot where people were harassed. You do, you do have this sort of thing. And the courts really haven't addressed this yet. Citizens United really does not get into in any way, shape, or form this, what the real standard is for mandating disclosure. The, the Citizens United didn't really make much of a showing, is how the court put it. Um, is the standard broken bones and bloody noses? That can't be the standard, right? It can't be that you have your physical harm because the court's gone broader, talks about economic harm, that sort of thing. So, so it certainly does chill. The courts have recognized the chill. And that's really going to be, I think, an, an issue that's going to develop over the next several years in the courts. What is the shape of reform to come, do you sense, from Congress? It's too early to tell. There will be some in Congress who introduce bills for more disclosure. Uh, that seems to be the theme. Uh, some have made no bones that they are attempting to reverse Citizens United and still silence the same speech that that the Supreme Court recognized as being protected by the First Amendment. You may have folks who come up with a more thoughtful approach, uh, uh, revisiting McCain-Feingold, perhaps, which recall was sold as a balanced compromise between eliminating negative ads and breaking the soft money ban with politicians, which it really didn't either. Uh, instead, it, it banned certain people from speaking uh, and then regulated the party committees to a point where they've become not nearly as relevant as they ought to be. Parties have been a, a natural echo chamber for the candidates. It is disclosed. It is, it is regulated. Um, Probably, probably even before, before it came, I find out more than it ought to have been. But now the parties really have had uh, a diminished role, and I would, I could see folks introducing bills to try to change that because once McCain-Feingold was was taken apart by the courts, what remains are very draconian regulations that put the federal government into state and local elections. Several members of Congress have offered constitutional amendments that you've alluded to, but they make pay some lip service to this exemption for media uh, enterprises. Mm -hmm. 
under the First Amendment as it's currently structured, as old campaign finance laws uh, were structured, there's no meaningful distinction that can really be drawn out between media organizations and people expressing themselves. Certainly not today. To the extent once upon a time someone could distinguish between the press because it was a newspaper or somebody owned a printing press and everyone else, those days are long gone. I'm not sure those days ever really existed. But today, um, who is the media and who's not the media is, is a question that um, one really can't answer, whether it's, it's – uh, you have a number of groups in D.C. that uh, claim to be reform organizations and they have someone that claims to be a reporter and they have a blog and they, they'll call and they'll represent themselves to be a member of the media. Um, some of these groups have, uh, have put in freedom of information requests with the, with the Federal Election Commission and they claim to be the media even though they're really not the media in the traditional sense. Um, the internet has really leveled that playing field I think in a very healthy way because now everyone can be heard. Um, what has changed in the media itself though is mergers, uh, the corporatization of the media and the Citizens United Court really picked up on this that, that how can you – silence um, Citizens United from, make, from saying things about Hillary Clinton when the nightly news says that and more about, about everyone. You're selecting different speakers for regulation. The Supreme Court, regardless really of who's been on the court and how conservative or liberal they've been perceived at the time, have been clear that the media d does not have any more right to speak than the, than the rank and file citizen. Uh, and, and they don't have less rights. Most of the court cases were less rights. But they don't have more. Everyone is the same. Justice Alito has spoken about this. I've written about it uh, even before Citizens United that, that when you look at the media, um, what to do. Legislative proposal-wise, it's interesting because if you believe the syllogism that says disclosure doesn't chill speech, if you, if you believe that premise, then you can trace out a syllogism that says, well, if it doesn't chill – and the court has said you can't treat speakers differently, then why is the media not subject to all this disclosure that everyone else is? Why should we not know? Now, I'm not suggesting we regulate the media, but that's where the logic of this goes. Um, so either everyone has to file a bunch of reports or no one has to file a bunch of reports. You say that and yet I think reporters in large part, even when they're reporting on campaign finance issues, don't seem to understand that there is no meaningful distinction between the media and citizens expressing reporters, themselves. Reporters don't. Um, you know, some do. I think the ones that have been around understand it. Um, the more experienced ones, I think, instinctively over the years have have have, have learned that that they they're, they're, we're all in this together. But but many don't. Um, and you see this manifest in other ways. The idea of anonymous sources. I mean, they're, sometimes they're stunned when a federal judge says. No, you have to tell this grand jury where you got this information. Well, I, you know, journalism school, I was taught this is sacrosanct. It's, it's not. It, it's not sacrosanct. The government can get in there and you, you, do, you do see this sort of thing. Um, you know, it, it, what's the difference between someone who makes a movie, uh, you know, or it, that's, a, that's a documentary or an entertainment movie or whatnot. You look at you, Michael Moore made, made Fahrenheit 9-11. The FEC dismissed that complaint against that movie. On this, on this idea of it was commercial enterprise, they sidestepped the speech issue. But when Citizens United came around, well, that's a, you know that's that's not really that's not really a they're a nonprofit. It's not a commercial enterprise. It's their first movie. You hear this kind of thing. Um, you just can't differentiate between between the two. Um, you know, the media has a has a very profound in, impact on what people think, and and it seems like they've really had a had a had a free reign. For a long time, and, and that's really, at the end of the day, uh, one of the most important parts about Citizens United. It didn't create this idea of corporate per corporate personhood and all this other stuff that, pe that the editorial boards tend to sell to the public. What it said was, with the rights the media have had for a long, long time, everyone else now has. <laughs>